this evening's Mass offered for the repose of the souls of Josephine Frullo, Timothy and Diane Tregler, and Rosa Anzalone. Glory to God in the Mass. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Lord God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our holy God, Son, Lord God, and our God, Son of God, who is the great grace of the world, have mercy on us, who is the great grace of the world, we see not in our hand, you are seated at the right hand. his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. 
For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offers himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since the death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. <coughs> the disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today is the feast of Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, Christ present in the tabernacle, Christ present when we receive Holy Communion. The feast day sends us into the pages of the Bible. It sends us into the theme of bread that appears in almost every book of the Bible. There's something about bread, but it's always standing by itself and kind of mysterious, and you don't know how to connect it. Like, what purpose did it have other than right there and then? Did it have meaning for the future? And this theme of bread in the scriptures is one of those themes that runs thousands of years like a thread through what is happening. And it only takes on meaning in Christ. Remember, there was the serpent in, in the desert that had no meaning, making the bronze serpent. Remember when God tested Abraham to sacrifice his son? What, what meaning? Why did you do that to the old man, God? Why did you put him to the test? You know all things. You knew that he loved you. What was the purpose? They don't have meaning when they were done. But thousands of years later, in something Christ taught us, they take on meaning. Why? 
because the Bible is God is at work over thousands of years, and he's at work coming to a point. So the bread theme that we see in the Bible, bread was the one staff of life that was considered a necessity. Bread was considered the purest food that you could eat. And you think to yourself, uh, I, I know watching kids being raised in my family, what was the first food that you gave to a child when you were getting them off the, the baby food in the jars? The first thing you gave the kid, because now the kid's got some tea, you gave him a piece of Italian bread to go on and, and to go on. And the kid would have a field day with that piece of bread. And why would, I mean, you didn't give the kid a hamburger, you didn't give the kid corn on the cob. You gave them bread because it was bread. There's nothing in there that could harm the kid. It's, it's pure. Even there's an expression that I heard often when I grew up, and it's an expression applied to a man. Oh, so-and-so married this guy. He's a piece of bread. She got herself a piece of bread, which means nothing harmful, only good. Bread has this symbolism. We know that in the desert, when Moses led Israel out of slavery, the people cried and they said, we miss bread. And God sent them the mysterious bread called manna that they found in the desert and they ate and they were nourished. We know that in the temple in Jerusalem, so maybe we're talking a thousand years before Jesus came, and I've explained to you what the temple was about. There were the Ten Commandments in the middle of a very small building, like our church, and then a huge courtyard. And the people would come there because God was over those commandments. God said, wherever these Ten Commandments are, I will be there. So the people, Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, the Apostles, Christ, always went to the temple to worship God. And there were the priests in the temple. And when the people brought their sacrifices, the priests would offer the sacrifices for the people. And the priests did this by turns. It was their turn to do the first shift from maybe 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then they would take turns. During their turns in the temple, the book of Leviticus told the people, bake bread for the priests to eat when they're offering sacrifice. And in the temple, in front of the place where the ark was, there would be a table. And on the table, there would be loaves of bread. And when you went to the temple, the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, would have seen these loaves of bread spread out on a table. They could smell them. They always smelled fresh. But they were only baked once a month. But they always smelled fresh. And the people would say, when we passed the table, it was like passing a bakery that you could smell the, the fresh baked goods. But sometimes that bread was a month old. But no one could eat it. It was only for the priests who were offering sacrifice in the temple. And the people, of course, would ask the priests, what does it taste like? We can't eat it. What, what is that bread that you can eat? And the priest would tell the people, it was baked three weeks ago, but it tastes as fresh as if it was baked an hour ago. And when we eat this bread, we're not hungry. 
And while we're in service in the temple, doing our shift, our six-hour shift for the weeks that we're assigned, we don't need to eat anything else. This bread is enough for us. We feel refreshed. We feel strong. We feel filled. There's no hunger. We're able to do the strenuous work of the sacrifices minute after minute on just eating that bread alone. Taken by itself, you say, what is that about? God feeding the priests in the temple with a special bread that was just for them and no one else was supposed to eat it. A precious bread that filled and satisfied and never went stale, always was fresh. What is that about? What was God's point in doing that? In the book of Leviticus, it doesn't have a point. It just kind of sits there, and you pull on your beard and say, that's very interesting. What is it connected to? We only understand the connection when Christ comes, because he completes the bread feeding. He completes it in this way. Twice in the Gospels, it tells us he took loaves of bread in his hand, and he showed the world that bread in his hand was not the same as bread in my hand. Bread in my hand, I could slice it, I could make a sandwich out of it. If I get real ambitious, I can make French toast. Bread in my hand only goes so far. In God's hands, he took a loaf of bread, and from his hand, 5,000 people were fed with that loaf of bread. So already it's telling us bread in God's hands is very different than it is in our hands. We just heard the gospel at the last supper. He took bread in his hand and he said, this is my body. He didn't say it's like my body. He didn't say that it's a remembrance of my body. He said, this is my body. I will become the bread. How could you do that, God? Answer, I could take one loaf and feed 5,000 people. I could walk on water. I could raise the dead to life. This is something very small. I will become the bread. And that bread will nourish your souls. The priest in the temple ate the loaves of proposition, they called them, ate those loaves to nourish their body. Christ is saying, I will give you the bread of heaven to nourish your souls, to feed your soul, so they don't grow weak so that you don't grow weary of life and life's challenges and problems. And understand, he said, you don't get this any other place. Staying home does not get you the bread of God that nourishes your soul. The world tries to feed us. There are a lot of things in the world that tell us I can satisfy you. Eat me. I'll be good for you. But the things of the world only feed our appetite. And it doesn't fill us. And it leaves us dissatisfied and wanting more. Uh, the things of the world lead us to look for happiness, look for peace, look for inner fulfillment, and all they do is amuse us for a few minutes, and then they get stale. I need something else. Uh, this was supposed to make me happy. It didn't. I need something else now. And so what the world does 
is the world doesn't satisfy the hunger of our souls. The world gives us addiction to things of the world which only give us more hunger that is never fulfilled. They turn us on a treadmill with no satisfaction and constantly seeking satisfaction. God says, my bread fills you. It doesn't grow stale. My presence in your life lifts your soul up, refreshes you, strengthens you, heals you, gives you strength to go on. But I can only give you this bread if you come to receive it, he tells us. You're feeding on the bread that I have become. And that's what Holy Communion is. <clears throat> it is the sacrament that we receive most often. And just as in the scriptures, God gave bread to the Israelites on their journey, so he gives us this bread on our journey to life. The Holy Communion that we receive is shown to us today by the church. We're reminded of what it's about. In the past weeks, we've had many examples that we've turned to of God being with us after he went back to heaven. The whole month of the Sacred Heart and our devotion to the Sacred Heart. Last week we heard about how God is with us in his heart. Holy Communion. God is with us dynamically. Not just black marks on a page. God is with us dynamically feeding us, nourishing our souls, filling us with that which gives us strength and never grows stale. That which gives us the stamina to make our journey through life and arrive safely at heaven. All this in holy communion. And we're reminded, don't take it for granted. Um, there are things that are precious, but when we see them and do them every day, they lose their preciousness because we don't pay attention. I mean, you ever have things in your house, someone will notice, oh, that's a very nice picture. It's been hanging on the wall. You haven't looked at it in 20 years because it's been there. We don't want Holy Communion ever to become that. So we do think, as Catholics, to remind us of how precious Holy Communion is. One thing that we do, reminder, we come into church, we genuflect. Father, I can't go down that far. That's okay. Hold on to the end of the pew. You won't fall. Just bend the, the knee a little bit. It's a technical do. You're doing the best you can. But we do that because we say, God, you're there. I, I know you are there. You are present. You said that you would become the bread. The bread is in the tabernacle. You have become Holy Communion. We're coming into your presence. I bend my knee to acknowledge your presence. Um, before I receive Holy Communion, I want to always be aware that I'm going to receive Holy Communion. Communion, and I prepare to receive Holy Communion. An hour before, I eat nothing, no food. Uh, water, if I absolutely have to, medication is not food. But I don't eat. I, I, I stay away from the refrigerator. Why? I'm reminding myself, I am going to receive Holy Communion. It's a reminder of what I'm going to do. When I receive Holy Communion, I go back to my seat. That's a moment of intense 
prayer. God, you're participating with, within me. You are breaking down and becoming food for my soul. God, strengthen me, heal me, be with me, help me. I know you're within me now. I have you within me. Church gives us this wonderful feast of Corpus Christi. Be reminded of how precious Holy Communion is, how necessary to get us from here to heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Please stand for the creed. I believe in the Lord God. the Son, the Holy Spirit, now forever, for ages unto endless ages. Amen. The response to each petition will be Lord, have mercy. That Christian people will all one day be united at the table of God to eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ together. Let us pray to the Lord. That God, who makes the spiritual food available to all, will help us obtain the physical food needed by the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that through their actions of love, the people of this community will reveal the Christ received in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sake of our parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Christ, the bread deceased family and friends, and for the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us, who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring Saint Gennaro, all the saints. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives, to Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. These are the announcements for this afternoon. Corpus Christi is tomorrow, Sunday, June 2nd. The procession with the Blessed Sacrament will begin at 1 p.m. Exposition will be until 2.30 p.m. Friday, June 7th, the first Friday, and the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the patron saint of our parish. Purgatorial Mass is at 8 a.m. and no exposition. All parishioners are urged as part of our prayer petition for the month of June to join us in pilgrimage to St. Agnes Cathedral, where Bishop Barris will celebrate the Mass of the Sacred Heart at 7.30 p.m. for us in the diocese. Tuesday, June 11th, the Pilgrim Virgin Statue of Fatima is coming to Sacred Heart to see the bulletin for details. And Father's Day cards and Novena envelopes are available in the rear of the church. Receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of you, and hence it will become for us, our spiritual drink. With humble spirit, contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his church. Again, let us pray. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper, with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as an unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. So we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. We with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus, Deus, Sabaoth, Venus, Etera, Gloria, Tua, Hosanna, Jesus, Benedictus, Benedict, in Domini, Domini, Hosanna. You are indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope john our bishop all the clergy remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection all who died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with blessed virgin mary mother of god Blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, safe from all distress as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. On this day, we sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
just to remind you, today is June 1st, the whole month of June dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. For us here at Sacred Heart, we have our prayers that we place symbolically in the heart of Jesus. He worries about us. He cares about us. There are things that we worry about. We write them down, put them on a slip of paper. They're attached symbolically to the image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus over my right shoulder. And with confidence, we give our needs and our prayers to the Sacred Heart. However, we put, they're more than just a wish. We're serious about our prayer. So one of the things that we do every day for the month of June is we say these arena prayers to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, the booklets are there. Hopefully you've already taken your booklet so that you can say the prayers at home. They take about four or five minutes to say. The other thing that we do, again, to show the sincerity of our prayer is as a parish, we make a pilgrimage. We take our prayers with us. And the bishop is going to say the Mass of the Sacred Heart this coming Friday, because this Friday is the Feast of the Sacred Heart. So at 7.30 in the evening, Sacred Heart Parish goes to St. Agnes Cathedral where the bishop celebrates the Feast of the Sacred Heart. So we're going to go together as a parish. Um, I know Rockville Center is a scary place. <laughs> it's, it's far, it's like 20 minutes up the road. And it's scary because there's something strange about a town where every building is a restaurant. I get the feeling of Twilight Zone. There's nothing behind them. They're just facades. But why do they want everyone to think they're a restaurant one after another? So we're not going to go there. We're just going to go to St. Agnes. You'll be safe. When we go to St. Agnes, try and sit together. Last year, when they went in church, the parishioners kind of went to the left, and they sat as a group. And we'll also have scapulars of the Sacred Heart that we'll give the parishioners when they get there to St. Agnes Cathedral. But this is something that's part of the seriousness of whatever it is we've written on those little slips of paper. Not only will I pray for it every day, I'm actually going to give up the comfort of a Friday evening and go to St. Agnes where the bishop will say the Mass of the Sacred Heart in order to make the statement, I am most serious about this prayer, this petition, Sacred Heart. Keep it in your heart and help me with it. So that's this Friday, the Mass is at 7.30. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine light, which is foreshadowed in this present age when we receive your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your and spirit. Say, Almighty God, bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.